Hey guys, look at what I've got. A fresh set of Heidenauer K60 tires. But let's go inside. It just started snowing today. It's mid-April. Me, Northern Germany and the weather up here. It's just a love-hate relationship. Hey guys, welcome to a new video. It is so good to see you. We have some exciting things to do today. First of all, we can install the new Heidenau K60 tires. And apart from that, the plan is to install the whole handlebar setup, see if everything fits and where the holes need to be drilled because we're going to run the cables inside. It's not really legal in Germany, but anyways, we'll go with it and hope that the officials won't notice. So we have the motor gadget mirrors, the motor gadget three button switches, motor gadget indicators, and then we have the Brembo brakes, Tomaselli throttle grip, and the simple domino clutch lever. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's see that we get everything on the bike, make sure that everything fits, and then we can prepare it for the wiring. It just needs a little bit more force and this is what this hole in the axle is good for. So you can like stick a screwdriver or I use this Proxon extension piece through here and then you can kind of twist it. Oh, nice, there we go. Oh guys, look at those tires. Oh, the bike looks so good with those. That's directly a completely different bike. Well, we still need to figure out what we do with this ugly fork stabilizer. Maybe we can modify it a bit or I don't know, we have to build something else, but we'll see. That's for a future video. Now onto the handlebars. Let's start on the right side. So first the Brembo master cylinder. Looks so good, all black. This will improve braking performance dramatically. I hope, at least. That's what they promise. Next up, the three button motor gadget switch. And this one actually runs the wire inside. So what we need to do is drill a hole into the handlebars. But I don't have the proper tool yet. It's kind of like a bar clamp with a hole inside that guides the drill. Next up, the Tomaselli throttle grip. What's special about this throttle grip is that it has an intake for two throttle cables. So on the BMW, one runs down to the left carb and one runs down to the right carb. And this is super easy to install because others where you only have one, you have to kind of like split the throttle cables with a divider. Next up, we have the bar and mirrors like that. And now the indicators that should go in here. I just want to see if they fit in or if we have to drill out the bars here on the end. These wires are so long. Here it stops. That doesn't work. Let's see if the nut fits. That is too big. All right, what we can do is measure the diameter of the nut. It is 12 millimeters, so I need to get a 12 millimeter steel drill. Maybe I have one. <laughs> nope. The biggest is 10, so I'm gonna get a 12, maybe 12.5 12 millimeter steel drill because how big is the hole now it is 12 millimeters how doesn't it fit ah okay i see i've measured the flat parts but i think i have to measure like diagonally if you know what i mean and then it is 13.5 millimeters all right good to know i'm gonna write that down because otherwise I'll definitely forget. Such a shame that I can't put those on yet. I mean, whatever I start, most of the times I need a new tool. Now, I don't know how it is with you and with your toolbox, but for me starting out, <laughs> it is so much that I need to get. And I already think that I have a lot of tools, but I don't know, there's so many like kind of special things. 
Right onto the left side, here we only have the domino clutch lever. Then we also have the three button switch. And same as on the right side, we have the motor gadget bar and mirrors. That looks so nice. Everything apart from the quad lock system is roughly installed on the bike. What I would say we do next is cut right here and then install those on there, then the mirror and then the bar end indicators and that should give a clean look. Sometimes these grips are a little stubborn and what helps is to just spray in some brake cleaner and then you can slide them on. The brake cleaner will, there's a proper term for that. I think it's evaporate, or no, dissolve basically and the grips are properly installed. Now we can tighten this one. Wait a sec, that's the tightest it can go. And it's still super loose. I mean, this is annoying. Would have been too easy. Everything's installed, it looks so good. The grips go well with the rest. The only problem that we have is that this left motor gadget switch just doesn't tighten. I mean, it spins around. I have to call them, see if we can switch it out or find a different solution, I don't know. Let's see. This is the setup on the right side. Super nice. I really like it. I really like how clean it is. And also, all buttons are easily reachable. And back here, we just hide the starter switch. And on the other side, we'll just hide the kill switch. So easy peasy. One thing that I just noticed and I really like about those motor gadget mirrors is they have a little edge here that hides this weird cutting line that I've just created on the grips. It's the next day. For some reason yesterday my tripod broke and I had to kind of get a replacement. So let's pick up where we left off yesterday and finish this bar installation. Just to catch up, what we need to do today is drill out the handlebars at the end, see how we can mount the brake fluid reservoir. Also, I would say we check whether the old clutch and throttle cables still fit. This is the new brake fluid reservoir. Let's see where we can mount it. The bottom end of the tube has to be connected here. Actually, I don't know how long this should be. Here's the hole where we have to like mount the mount to. Oh no, yes, this one. Ah, that's movable. Okay, that makes it maybe easier. How about like this? All right, let's see if we can build a cardboard mount just to see, get a feel of how it looks. What do you think? Next, let's install the clutch cable and the two throttle cables. We first have to hook it in at the bottom and then just run it up here and hook in the cable into the clutch lever. And to do that, there are these little metal things where you hook in the clutch cable and then you place those in here so that they're secured. The only problem that we have is that the clutch cable basically is not too short, but this is as much as we can pull out. And from here to there, doesn't it manage to go all the way. The reason for that is that on the old screw that goes into the clutch lever, it sits flush in there. I've got no idea how we can move this one down here. I guess I need to do some research. All right, before we go inside and see what we have to do about the clutch cable, let's see if at least the throttle cable still fit. This is where the two throttle cables will run through and then they need to be hooked into these two little holes. I somehow have the problem that the throttle cable is all the way in here, in this sleeve thing, and it doesn't come out. So I think I need to somehow adjust it. Oh no, I need to better understand those. It's still not enough. I mean, we have like one and a half centimeters here. And the problem that we also have is that we're missing these little metal things that we need to hook them in here. So what I'm going to do is do some research and catch up with you once I have an update. All right, guys, I've done some research about the control cables and actually Revival Cycles has made a super nice video about that, showing you 
how you can build your own custom control cables and i'm going to link that up here they explain it so well definitely go watch it if you need to do this yourself they also have a kit that comes with everything you need to build that but the only problem with that is they are in the states and shipping it here would cost a lot take a long time and then it's very unsustainable so i went ahead and did a little bit more research and you can be happy because we're going to build our own custom control cables another thing that we have to learn or can learn when i started building bikes or not building but working on bikes i was always terrified when i found something that i wasn't able to do or when i thought okay like i can't do that because a professional has to do it that was like my mindset but since i'm getting more and more into working on bikes i actually like figuring out these things and I like when problems like this pop up. On the one hand, it takes a lot of time, but on the other hand, I really like this feeling of becoming independent from someone who knows it or a workshop. And I love having you along the way, so that makes it very fun. Well, this will be our next project. And for that, I have already measured all the bits and pieces that are on here, but that would be part of a new YouTube video because otherwise we would extend the limits of this one. So this will be a future project since we already have all the measurements on here. It's only two pages. I'm going to make sure that we have those fairly quickly and then we can go ahead and finish the installment of the handlebars basically. But there are a few more things that we can do now. And for one, where is it? I bought a 14 millimeter steel drill. So what we can do is at least attempt to drill out the handlebars. So I would say let's do that now and then see where we end up. Damn it, this doesn't fit. All right, let's see if we can find another. Why? I mean, why don't they work? Right, I guess that doesn't work, so I need to find a neighbor who has a drilling machine that's big enough for the drill. I'll be back. Nice, I've got one from our neighbor and this one actually fits. I'm somewhat nervous to ruin the handlebars, but I mean, we have to try it and then hope for the best. So that does not really work. I think the problem is the electric drill, maybe with one of those that you plug in, that might work. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything back off, take the bars, go to Andy's place and see if he can help us. Tief genug, ne? Yeah, just right. Perfekt. Wenn die Mutter jetzt reingeht, ist das gut. Sonst kannst du die... Ja, super. Nice, guys. Success. Andy got the job done. We have both sides drilled open so that the indicators fit in there. The trick was to first use a 30 millimeter drill and only then the 40 millimeter drill. And that's something I really have to learn because I often go for the solution that seems to be the easier or the faster one, just like this one or the cheaper one, because I was at the hardware store and I looked at them and I thought, do I need the 30 millimeter one? And then the 30 millimeter one was like, I don't know, 12 euro. And I thought like, nah, I skip it. And I had that in mind, but I thought it can't make such a big difference. Like, but when Andy drilled in here, it went in like butter. It was like zzzz, in, out, and then 40 millimeters, same. So now we have this done. Uh, we can reassemble everything. And then hopefully the indicators will also fit. All right, everything's back on here. Now we can install the indicators. Don't worry, I know we still need to drill the holes. So now we screw in this nut and by doing that, we actually like squeeze the rubber and that should make sure that the indicators fit properly. Let's see how far in the nut has to be for it to properly sit flush like this with the bar end. Ah, okay, I see. 
seems like it's not about the nut in here that hits the edge where we've drilled, but rather this edge on the indicator. So this one still hits the bar ends and well, I've ordered a tool um, yesterday. We can also use that here, I guess, to mimic the shape of this edge. And then hopefully those will slide all the way into the handlebars. So this is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really enjoy having you along. And we already had 200 subscribers. That really means a lot to me. It blows my mind. Thank you so much for all of your support and all of your comments helping me out. I really appreciate that. I'm now just going to install the other indicator roughly. So this is what it will look like in the end. And yeah, thanks again for watching guys, really appreciate it. And in the next videos, we are going to properly install the indicators and then also separately do the quad lock system. So stay tuned and if you have enjoyed this video, you'll also enjoy probably the rest of the build series. So check out the playlist right here. If you want to follow along, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.